The four is good. Where is my one right now? Okay, bet. Bet. Cool. Cool. To here, what you looking like, bro? She go good in the shadows. It's nothing behind the sheriff we don't want, right? You, 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 you listen to Marvin Gaye? Yes, sir. Sade? Yes, sir. It's Michelle Obama. Harry Tubman's up there. We got Angela Davis. And then we got us, of course. Yes, sir. Martin and Malcolm and Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Can you have titties behind you? We got titties back there. But they artistic. They not new. I understand. It's We're good. I promise. You. We're good. We should turn it upside down. They never know. They'll just look like knees. <laughs> Whatever. I'll be here all weekend, man. Y'all forgot I'm a comedian. Hey, welcome back to the 85 South Show. Yes. Hey. I've been saying it for a long time. I guess I spoke this, you know, into existence. There is, there's literally about to be a new sheriff in town. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been using your title. I didn't know that you was going to eventually be here. You got to say it right, though. When you say there's a new sheriff in town, you got to say his name, and his name is Pat, Pat LeBat. Yes, sir. There's a new sheriff in town, and his name is Pat, Pat LeBat. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? Hey, First of all, congratulations. I'm yes, sir. No, you here to speak up again, man. We got it's runoff season. It is. It is. And first of all, thank you all. I mean, it's been amazing. We had a chance to talk outside. Uh, the things that you all are doing uh, was I had no idea. Right. And so I, I told somebody earlier I was bragging on y'all uh, since I met you. And I, I am absolutely honored to be back. Man, it's an honor sir. and a privilege to have you back, man. Yes, sir. Because now it's getting real. It is. It's a runoff. That means that, hey, it was, it was you right there. Yeah, it is. 19 so, days. This is the next step, man. So after you going through the initial election process, my first question would be, did you go back and, and, and make some notes and, and retool your strategy? And what are you doing moving forward for the runoff process? So we did. I mean, it's almost rinse and repeat. Uh, you know, you know, I was running for almost a year and a half, mm -hmm. and so we were very thorough about what we did right. and, and intentional. And so the plan worked. Right? It's hard to beat an incumbent. When you look, though, 100,000 people in Fulton County intentionally did not vote for the incumbent. They intentionally voted for change. Mm. And that's what the whole platform is about, is about change. And all the things that are happening in our communities, uh, it's time for change. It is And we time. need new leadership. So timing is perfect. I, I say it's divine intervention, right? And it's it's time for change. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. Now, the runoff process is there any difference in the runoff than it was in the initial election? Well, the initial there were, uh, and it, there are some differences. There were five candidates, right, including the incumbent, but more importantly, there were uh, literally a hundred and plus precincts that were open. We only had six early voting locations, so I do want to applaud. Uh, the Fulton County Elections Department early voting this time is actually 20 different locations, including the, the largest in the southeast at State Farm Arena. So that'll be huge. But there were also 47 items on the ballot. Now there are only four. Mm. So it's down to the nitty gritty. Right. And so less than 50% uh, voted for any one candidate. And so now you can win by one vote. And so every vote counts. Okay. Yes, sir. So. Now mm -hmm. you you been that you're running for sheriff, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I know where I come from in DC, you know, we don't have any of that. So is there a difference in the way that you have to police down here versus other, you know, inner cities across America? Is there a difference in, in your methods that you can apply being a sheriff versus just being a well, you know, a high ranking police officer? Well to your point, right, the sheriff is elected. Mm -hmm. And so police chiefs and police officers are, are appointed. Mm -hmm. by the mayor. There are 15 cities inside Fulton County. Fulton County is one of 159 counties in the state of Georgia. So it dates back and centers to the point that uh, it is one of the largest and most powerful associations in the state. And so the high sheriff is considered uh, the person that runs the largest uh, sheriff's office as well as the Atlanta sits in Fulton County. So there is a difference, mm -hmm. right? You you are allowed to swear people in uh, as deputies. Don't get any ideas. I, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm just trying to get immunity. Uh, <laughs> you know, if there's any way to sign up for immunity, but, yeah, I but, want some of that. But the sheriff should set the tone for policing, 
all right, uh, set the tone for law enforcement across the county. And you know, there are 15 cities, as I said, inside Fulton County, 15 different uh, police chiefs. And so we have to do a better job in our community of really listening to our community, but at the same time organizing and making sure we're thoughtful about what we do. Right. I watched the last interview that y'all did, and uh, it was very interesting, and I had so many questions just watching it. Uh, where I come from, there's a high recidivism rate. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when guys get out, they go right back. Right. And I think a lot of that is because there is a disconnect between the people who enforce the law and the people who have the hardest time, you know, abiding by it. So being as though that you are looking to be the new sheriff, what do you think that you can do differently to make sure that when guys come home, that they are useful to the community? Right. What programs do you think you can implement, being as though you have that, you will have that power to give guys that come from the neighborhood, that are you know impactful inside the neighborhood, to give them something realistic to do, to keep them active and keep them from going back, and also use that influence to keep the other young people from going back? Well, I think it starts before an individual gets released. And so, as, as we discussed last time, I spent 30 years at the City of Atlanta Department of Corrections, the last 10 as chief. And one of the things that we did was create a partnership with the State Department of Corrections with the number one reentry program in the country. So we have people in, in sheriff's offices and police offices uh, across the county and across the, the country trying to figure out what we did. And what we did was create an environment, much to your point, where these young men had real jobs. They become city employees. So instead of leaving in incarceration with $25 in a bus ticket, we had people leaving with $20,000, $30,000 in the bank. Oh, really? And so they become city employees. So I tell everybody they start uh, literally start their retirement while they're incarcerated. So they keep their jobs. And so when you come out, you have a place to live. You more importantly or equally as important is they now have some stability to not go back to those old ways. So and I don't know if I said this last time. I know we were uh, you, you weren't here when we mm -hmm. talked about uh, there's a young man that sat in the back of the room and he said, Chief, I never thought. For, but for this program, I wouldn't even be able to buy my, my daughter a prom dress, right? And so that touches you, and it, and it inspires you to continue to go through these, these programs and build programs like this. And it was one of the most enjoyable experiences of my 10 years as chief because we really affected change. And that's what this was about. This was affecting lives. They started uh, getting their medical insurance while they're incarcerated, not necessarily for them because that's our responsibility, but for their family. Right? So can you imagine a situation where a child hasn't had medical insurance because their father's been uh, incarcerated? Right. And so for us, it was about how do we uh, prevent that? And to, exactly to what you said is how do we create a better system so when these brothers and sisters come out, that they are in fact more equipped and to, to stay out. And that, so we've had zero uh, individuals return back from the program, return back to, to jail. And then equally, we have to look at, uh, we want to rest our way out of any of these problems. And so we started reading with kids on the third grade level. You hear all the time about the school to prison pipeline. And it, how do we interrupt that pipeline? And that's what it was, it's sending officers over to, uh, to really engage with kids at a young age. And so hopefully they could stay out of jail as well. Yeah, makes sense. So, I know yeah, that you shouldn't go to jail for fighting in school. That builds character. <laughs> I think that's y'all really gotta stop arresting people for everything. Like them kids need an ass whooping in high school, so you can figure out that you are a good student and you're not tough. Like I've seen ass whoopings have a positive effect. impact on people. I feel yeah. like everybody, if you get in a fight, both people shouldn't have to go to jail. Like the motherfucker who lost should have to go. <laughs> Well, yes oh, and no. If, if, like taking both parts, you got to defend yourself. If you lose, or if, like if you start the shit and you lose, then you should have to go to jail. <laughs> well, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. I know, that's what yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> but, but what I used to tell people when they get to fighting inside the jail was the winner we're going to send to court, the loser we're going to send to the hospital. So, you know, somebody's got to go somewhere. <laughs> well, I, I know that. Growing up, being a police officer is not the thing to be. I'm talking about, like, if you raise your hand in my classroom and say, yeah, I'm going to be the police, we're going to beat your ass at recess. And you, and you gonna see be how the much police. character that bill? That's what I was getting. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so my question to you is, what do you think you can do to change that narrative? 
Like, do you think that it's something that can be done to make kids not look as, at police as the enemy and look at them as because we don't have any good experiences. Most of us don't have good experiences with the police. I've had very few in my life that are positive to where when you see them, that initial fear of, oh, shh, they got me, goddamn. Well, like, how do you how do you feel like you can change that, especially in the eyes of young people? Because I feel like if it was more if it was cool or if they had some people to look at that were cool, then it would be started at an earlier process in their life so they can grow with the law and knowing how to enforce it amongst our people. And, and look, I get it, right? If, if the blue lights come on behind me right now, my stomach starts flipping, right? Until they realize that I, I used to be with the city, right? Um, it might not be good enough these days. They well, used like, to be shit. Yeah, I'm telling you. Uh, uh, but it goes back to something we <laughs> talked about last time and uh, when we talked about training. Right. right. And you, you asked me when, what kind of training and where will the training end? Right. And, do we tra and, and see, I remember this. You asked me, uh, do we train white officers to kill black young men? Yeah. Right. Uh, and so that allows us, these conversations allow us to evolve. And so I would say now to that, we need to figure out how to make the first conversation and, and encounter one that is not one of arrest. And so that's why we sent officers over to read at the third grade level and, and be a part of the school system. And, and I actually, and you know how proactive but I am. Send them to high school to read, third grade level too low. Well, See, that's the problem. They're training them with the wrong shit. See, I can understand that if, if I don't see no videos of black officers doing this shit, I don't see black officers going to white communities, whooping people ass and harassing them in, in their front porch. I've been in the neighborhood where it's like, damn, we already live in the most fucked up place we can live. You mean to tell me we can't sit on the porch? That I, whole I get that. police pull up, go in the house shit. What else? We, I mean, it's like to the point where these officers go into black communities and provoke this shit. But you know that we living in a crime-ridden place. It's broken over here. But what we you have think to do we to need your point? officers sitting in our fucking driveway all day watching us? Well, what no. does that create? Well, the better opportunity is for us to have officers live in the community. But that right? makes it even worse. Because now we broke and we got to live next well, door to snitching ass stamps. Well, <laughs> no. But, but it, what it does is build friendships, right? And so if you have an officer that's able to live in your community, uh, when something happens, it's not unfamiliar to you, uh -huh. right? And that's what this is about. It goes beyond community policing and into an area that allows us to be a part of the community. Well, we do got to act like with a lot of shit coming out about police officers doing all this that we did not know. First of all, Police not about to be living in our broke ass communities if they making two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. Let's be real. Oh, well, let's be Cheryl. real. They're not making that. But th they They're making, making a lot more than the average well, citizen to I, be living next door. It happens because people live in nice neighborhoods, but I'm talking about the ass whoopings that they they're not trying to live in them communities where they go and do all this terrible shit. I think if you implement it, yeah, if you right. implement, if there was a program implemented to where if you got, if you become a police officer, you are obligated to live in these communities, regardless. So don't become a police officer if you're not willing to live amongst the people that you policing. If you have a problem with that, then that automatically shows that you're not fit to be a police. Because if you look at a community and say, "I ain't standing over that dirty motherfucker." then that means that you have an idealism of what these people are. And there's no way you can really police them if you don't have an idea of who they are as a people. So right. I think well, it should I, I be... Think, I think we start earlier than that. And so you look at what the Atlanta Police Department is doing with the At Promise Center. And so every recruit, so we don't say at risk, right? It's the At Promise Center. And so we look at uh, the recruits actually having to, I won't say do time, but serve in those communities as their recruits, right? It, I think it's unrealistic to say that everybody has to be in that community right. because we all want better, right? We also want a better community. The question becomes, how do we do it? And so the Atlanta Police Department was very forward thinking when they put, they built five houses over in uh, Vine City, uh -huh. right? and went through a selection process of making sure officers that wanted to be in the community were able to purchase those homes, have to stay in those homes, 
right? But then they are part of the community. Right. So we have to do a better job of that. And then the other piece is a lot of officers can't afford to live in town. Right. I mean, they don't get paid two or three hundred thousand dollars. That's that's. A and I think that straight. creates a level of, of, yeah. of, of a level of, of you know, problem is, is problematic the because the budget a billion dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's Los Angeles. You're but absolutely right. It's like I just think that it's the enforcing of the law. That's the problem that I've experienced because we don't get taught the law. We just get it enforced upon us. The people who look like us. Nobody's coming into the community. You can come read on a third grade level, but there should be some programs offered, in my opinion, offered by the police where you can come and learn the law and learn your real rights to where you know if your rights are being violated. Because a lot of times we don't know our rights are being violated and we react based on just natural instinct and then end up breaking the law within that. So I, I would challenge you to say, uh, one, you're correct, but there is a Citizens Academy. Right. So let's be a part of it. And that teaches you everything that you just spoke of. There's a sheriff's academy and there's a, a citizen's academy, citizen's police academy. So we, we want to build those relationships. And it's about spreading the word because people don't know that. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's a eight, nine week course right. that you have to be committed to. But at the same time, it allows us. Uh, and one of the things I said last time I was here is I want to make sure that the community and, and law enforcement, the gap is, is bridged so quickly because it's necessary to do that, right. right? But what that means is I become sheriff-elect on August 12th, right? I'm going to take a couple of weeks. I got to give my wife her, her time back. Right. Well, come, come September. Reclaiming my time. Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah, so if you don't, you're going to have more problems than this year. I agree. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but come September, I want to have these communal conversations mm -hmm. and be able to say what, what is the issue. And one of the things that came out of our conversation was uh, how we train. And so I think the focus needs to be on not the physical part of it, but how we change the mental training to say, I'm not making an arrest. My job is to figure out how to help you get home tonight. Right. Right. And if we put that first, exactly. then, then watch some of the things that, that go away. And you Once said there's a Citizens Academy. So would it be possible? Let's say I, you know, all right, I'm going to the Citizens Academy. I'm going to learn the law. Mm -hmm. Like, is there something that can be given to me to show that I'm, I completed the Citizens Academy? Right. You motherfuckers is tripping. I know my rights. Like, and if you violate me and I know that, you know, I didn't complete the Citizens Academy, then that means I should be able to get you something that you can't eat lunch for a week or something. I don't know what it is. Hey, this is this has been the question that everybody keeps raising. Okay. They keep saying about, well, all cops are not bad cops. Like, where are the good cops intervening in the bad cop situations? I think you, you have to make that a, a new uh, training tool, right? You have to break that. So you mean that you got to train people to say, no, hey, I mean they is, fucking up. You can do this to everybody else, but if you see it with somebody you work with. No, what you have to do is break that cycle, okay. right? And, and you have to break that mentality. And people have to understand. They call the blue wall of silence, right? See? Yeah. Yeah, you said that. And it was so eloquent to the point that we need to make sure that you are no longer able to stand by why somebody, and doesn't matter who it is, right. is committing a crime, right? And, and George Floyd happened after we had our conversation. Right. That was murder. There's no, no other way to look at it. Right. And I have said publicly that the officers that stood by and watched that deserve life in, in prison as well, right? Um, those things have to be not necessarily talk to your point, right. but expose to say it's okay to, to, to really innovate. But why is it like that? Why isn't that already implemented? If they know that there are bad cops doing bad things and there are good cops doing good things, where, where I'm saying, what's the disconnect at the police station? Not the people. What is the culture that these people feel threatened to say, hey, you can't be killing people. We got to take the heat for this. It's the same shit, mentality right? as the streets to it's me. Exactly. You know what I mean? So what yeah. I'm, but what I'm saying, though, is, is like if you're going to go out and you're going to take the same heat for some shit that you have, you don't want to be like you don't want to be bunched up with the bad apples. Where is the disconnect with like these people over here ain't taking that shit? But you have these to make sure it's okay. Ones. You have to make sure it's okay. And here's the thing we got to keep in mind. A good cop. Nobody hates a bad cop more than a good cop. Right. Oh, you that's sure? hard to believe. Right you there. Sure? Right. Well, when you have people and this is the thing we have to get to, we have to get back to the community to make sure people understand that our hearts are bigger than our badges. Right. 
And as long as we keep that in mind, and, and it starts with customer service. So, and, and we have to, and you asked me last time, how do we not necessarily train our way out of this, but how do we retool this? Right. We have to figure out how to fly this law enforcement airplane and rebuild it at the same time. And it starts with these conversations, right? A, a lot of police chiefs, a lot of sheriffs, people scared to come in here and have this conversation. But this is a real conversation. Right. And as long as we can have a real conversation, then I get better, we get better, right? And, and we can close that gap. Right. Now it's a, I know that it's a disconnect between the way the law is enforced amongst us and everybody else. And I learned this firsthand in my neighborhood that I live in now, it's a majority white neighborhood. You better my, move. Now, I know, right? It's crazy. You gotta get uh, the fuck out of there. The, the, some neighbors, some neighbors that live, you know, across from me, had a full-on domestic dispute outside in the front yard. I'm talking about fist fighting. Fuck you! You calling me alcoholic? I mean, it was going down. Yeah. And the police never came. They never came. They never. I don't know if they were called or not, but they never showed up. I know if I'd have been outside aggressively helping the motherfucker, the police would have been called. So where? And in those situations, how do you find a solution for the difference and the, the imbalance between the law applying to everybody else and black people? So let me let me start here. If you saw this occurring, right, was somebody feeling threatened in the conversation? And, yeah, uh, they was going, I'm talking about that white right. man rage. It was so, going down. So, Fuck you, asshole. Come right. at me, bro. I so, was very terrified. Uh, so you but terrified. I was afraid to call the police because I know if I called the police, they're going to fuck with me. That's the well, way I that, feel. That, uh, and you feel like that, and that's the perception, right? But that's the fact. I'd have called the police. I, no. I'd have called the police. That is against the law. It ain't the black man in this room. Like, I mean, that that is the against police. the law, man. You, mm -hmm. As a black man, you can't call the police. For like, nothing. For nothing because it's like, you get to a point, and this is this is just from experience. I got uncles, and my father was murdered, uncles murdered, uncles in jail, cousins in jail, countless numbers of friends who suffered the same fate. And we know that if something is going on, if me and this guy get into a dispute and the police are called, then everybody else who's present is in danger. Everybody. It doesn't, it, I can't, as a black man, I can't feel like it, all these black men, and you the sheriff, nigga. I feel like if somebody called the police and they came in here now, we still in danger with the sheriff in this motherfucker because we all black men and so, people feel like it's too many of them to, for it to be safe. There's no way I can handle this situation safely without calling 19 cars. And I mean, you got a gun. Every police officer has a weapon. So I don't understand why you need 19 different police officers to show up to defuse a situation between two people. So let me ask this. Would you have felt more comfortable if there was an officer living in your community that you could lean on? It depends on how cool we is. Like, if, right, you know right. what I mean? I if mean, I smoked a blunt with the nigga one time, you know what I mean? And we had a conversation about happen. some shit. He you know what I mean? If he, was, if, he was, if he was a cool dude, then maybe. But other than that, nah, because I know it's like, this is the way I feel. I, you know, I don't come from a city with gang banging, but the police is, in my mind, the biggest gang in the world because they all got guns. They the only gang where everybody is strapped. <laughs> and, and Every other right. gang, you got a couple niggas that got some guns, but the police, everybody's strapped. And when they come, and they not just strapped with a gun, they got a gun, a billy club, a taser, that slapstick shit that they use. I, it's, it's your whole, you got a Batman belt of fuck a nigga up. That's <laughs> but, just the, the, but, the thing, but, he, but to your point, right? That tool belt, what we need to add to it is the the ability to say my first reaction in every conversation right after you know the scene is safe is how do we diffuse or get you home safely if we add that to that tool belt right from training it has to be repetitive we add that to that tool belt then i know i shouldn't be reaching for my gun when this is my next door neighbor right we got to figure this out we, and, and so my question is this What's your suggestion? My suggestion? My suggestion, personally, is I don't think that you should be able to be a police officer if you're scary. And police got to stop creating crimes, too. Yeah, and if you're scary, like, When I, I say creating crimes, it's like if they show up and they say, what's the problem? Let me see your license. You are who you say. It shouldn't be all that extra shit. 
all that. Hey, man, look, you going to see no problems going on over here. Please go find the murderers and the crooks and the motherfuckers. Don't just take me to jail because you got a whole bunch of black people over here. It's some shit going on. Like, once they there, they came to take somebody. That, that's my point. They don't get in the car and leave. But that's my point. We should make the first encounter and the thought process of it's not a crime for us to be here. Right? It's not a crime for us to be here. But for this, to, on the other side of that, like he was saying earlier, once they come, though, right. somebody going to jail did we something. We have to change. Right. But now, here's the thing. Most of the time, they show up because somebody called them. Of course. But right. we want to stop all these phantom ass calls, too. Because if you we out here kicking it and we know ain't no neighbors, they, where they getting these calls from? But you can go back to every 911 tape. You I go don't back believe that now. I and don't. You go back and, and, and find the call. I feel like you shouldn't be able to be a police officer if you're scary. And what I mean by scary is you see these reactions in these situations where these innocent people, unarmed people are killed. And you see the reaction to when somebody is shot or when they pull their gun, it's just, oh, all right, put your fuck up. And, and you could just tell, that, man, you scary. You know what I mean? You are scary. There should be, I, fuck a questionnaire. You should be put in random situations throughout your training where some shit just happened. Now y'all got to set it, you can set it up to where it just be the police and y'all do it amongst each other. But when a motherfucker born in this house, you had two motherfuckers jump out the bushes on his ass. Right? Ooh, I got it. Y'all love training so much. This training. All right, you should be, if you want to be the police officer, you got to go to one of these little redneck ass Georgia counties with a gun in the car and then get pulled over by their police so you can see. Yeah, that's it. The police got to go there through go, real police. You got it. real police. I'm situation. talking about some police who don't know nothing about this police academy shit. They're going to search the car and violate you and treat you like a regular citizen. Then when you come back, if you still want to do it, then you can well, be the so police. a couple things we need to unpack. And we're going to stop yeah. acting like police just be by the book, too, Pat. You know they, you know they be doing Not people dirty. You well, know. Let's, let's unpack this dude, right quick. Dude found a way to get me. I mean, like, it's Hold like up. Well, wait, don't way. tell him yet. Wait, he's going to unpack this part. Well, let's, let's unpack this part first. And, and, this is, and I said this last time, right? Young men that become police officers, young women that become police officers. And you can be a police officer at 20, 21, right? 20 going into the academy as long as you're 21, that kind of thing. Uh, and what we do is we put them in high stress situations, right? And we're talking about law enforcement in general. Uh, but well, Give me an example of but, high but stress. Then, so then, high, well, give me an example well, of high I mean, stress situations. Those things happen. So you put them in this environment where the training is just as you say it, right? You're not jumping out the bushes, but, but their car like stops. That. Those are things. Hit, hit, hit me out. But if we put them in a situation that the community recognizes, just as you just said, mm -hmm. right? You continue to train in that fashion. But here's the other thing, is that many of us have kids, right? I got, I got a 21 and 22 year old, okay. right? Men, yes, black, black grown men, that I wouldn't give a gun and I certainly wouldn't put them out 11 at night to seven in the morning and send them to the worst parts of town. So we have to reconfigure and restructure so we got seasoned veterans, right? So that those things don't happen. Right. And then the other thing, and I offered this to you and, and, and Tyler uh, fr from the Tyler Chronicles, is that as I become sheriff, one of the things we can do, and I'll, I'll make sure you involved too, Chico, is uh, include you all in the training, right? So that you can experience it to the point that you remember when I said this. Ain't no, I ain't um, going for no taser shit. I'm going for the taser, I swear. But, it's going to be real charged after that. Well, I got it, right? But you got to be hit with a taser in order to carry one, right? I don't want the other, I, you, What, you got to shoot me? So you got to ride that lightning. You so you shoot, like, well, what I got to do to get a gun then? Not, you don't get shot to get a gun. Well, but well, that don't make no sense. <laughs> that's stupid. That is but dumb. the point being <laughs> is, <laughs> if, and, and I've said this, do you remember in Men in Black when, when Will Smith went in there and he shot the little girl? And during his training, because she had boots on, et cetera. Well, there, there are opportunities for us to put you in high stress situations where these, uh, these instructional machines actually shoot back, right? So I want to take Chico, bring you into this instructional machine and, and have this high pressure situation put together and see how you survive the situation. And so to that point, we did, we did that with a couple preachers couple pastors who would always get out in front of every shooting 
And now you see them be a little, be a little more sensitive because they went in there and killed everybody in the room. Right? Good guys, bad guys, they're shooting everybody. Right? In the but, name of Jesus! <laughs> but we have to do that, right? And, and we have to get in front of the conversation so that you and I can, can really build that relationship and then tell me what we're doing we can do better, right? And tell me what we're doing wrong. And then when we do that, we, we grow from it. And, and every, everybody will tell you, anybody around me, I'll give you my number before we leave. Uh, and, and feel free to call me. Let's, and when you see things that are right, wrong, and different, right? But the first thing we got to do with the sheriff's office and set the tone in law enforcement in Fulton County is focus on customer service. Have you had period. to deal with that late night call from one of your sons calling you about getting pulled over and you hear in the background they're clearly being violated and turn the goddamn phone off? And here, here's the crazy part. Here's the crazy part. Unlike the, the incumbent, right? I have to have that conversation repeatedly right. with my son about what to do when you're stopped, all those things. What right? should you do when you're stopped? Ain't no way in the world my daddy would be the sheriff and I gotta worry about what I do when I get stopped. That's you well, five. You got me fucked up. You see my grain of hair, nigga? That's that Labot, nigga. You got me fucked up. You better run my fucking well, license again. Yeah, I know. You better run it again. You see the name on the back of this. Right. Check the address. For real. Until, until you're in Nashville and your son calls you and tells you he's on the side of the fucking road because these cops have pulled him out. They don't care nothing about you. Right. They don't care nothing about you. Now they let him on his way. Let me be clear. But see, the, the, the painful part for me is he doesn't tell me this till I get home, or right, till he gets home, right? And I'm like, son, why didn't you call, why didn't you call me, All right? So that one, every time they leave, I cringe. And, and that's one of the things that we have to learn to, to unwind and unpack. So you're right. It, it is, while that may seem like an easy answer for, for him, right. right? But he's also trying to build his own identity all right but it happens it happens and it and it's unfortunate that it happens but we have to figure out how to reverse that trend now i know you know just how does politics. it just happen on one side though? that's what i was just about to say it Logan. Can't, it's not a trend if they only doing it to certain people and this, this it's what I not mean. just a random act of hey you've been violation and you being belligerent this is the procedure and this is not this ain't just motherfuckers talking. Like everybody in this room could tell you a handful of the times where it's like, all right, this is it. We didn't went through the whole, you know why I pulled you over? I got your license. They see that we good. Now here comes the dirty part. They gonna do something extra that ain't got shit to do with none of this. We can go from you said I ran the stop sign to now was which one is it, officer? Like. Well, I mean, look, let, let me be honest with you. Um, there is no transparency. They tell you, oh, we'll get to that part later. It's, that's the old that's but we gotta the procedure. Change that. But we got to change that. And to your point, to your point, when you say everybody in that room, that includes me. So I, I had my badge in my back pocket, and I'm up there in Cobb County. And I'm 20 years old. Look, you see how every black man in here that know Atlanta yeah. starts shaking their yeah. head like, Ooh, right. you Ooh, what, what you doing, you doing up there? That's, that's right. That's right. That's right. But I'm 20. I wasn't, I wasn't running for office at the time, right? And to be treated the same way you just spoke of, right? It the gives procedure. Me, it gives me real life experience to say, once I become sheriff, we got to change that dynamic, right? We got to change it. We got to change it because, you know, our youth, and the, and the people that are protesting are demanding quality service. We have to be able to deliver quality service. Right. And it starts with customer service. And so the one thing about me that you'll find that's different than most, uh, especially different than, the, than the, the incumbent, I'll give you my number, I answer the phone, right? But what we teach, somebody, one of you just asked me a few minutes ago, what do we teach in terms of our youth and, and our kids? We teach that you gotta survive the stop. You can't hold court on the, on the side of the road. Right. And so when my son called me from Nashville, and he said, Daddy, they got us on the side of the road. And listen, don't hold court out there. I don't need your videotaping. Now you can cut on the phone and put it down. Let me be clear, right? To get some, some good documentation is what I call it. But you don't need to be uh, really anti-police at that moment. You first got to survive the stop. Right. Right? Because I know you got plenty of good lawyers. 
Right. You got to get back to them first. Though. You got to get them. You got to get, like you say, you got to get you gotta past survive that. Stop. You got to su- survive, you gotta survive the stop. But just like you said, I know the procedure. And then Chico would tell you, I'm the, I'm the most thorough motherfucker when it comes to the procedure because it's like, I know how, how one second can change into forever. A bad section. So it's A like, bad. even if I'm dead ass wrong, I'm not going to fucking make this shit but no what more you difficult. don't want to be is dead dead ass right but but that's what i'm saying even right. even, you don't even be dead if right. i know i'm i violated at some point because it. it's like i know sometimes shit just happened you may see the motherfuckers behind you you may have swerved but yeah hell yeah i'm trying to make sure that it ain't shit in here that's gonna make you take you. it to the I'm, next level I'm i clear. can take that because i know you, it's a certain violation that come with a traffic violation but then if we got to go through the whole back and forth, then the shit, then, then by the time the other motherfuckers come, now we got a whole ass whooping waiting outside and we can't get out the car at this point. Right. Like, well, that's so why we, body we know what important. levels that they operate on. Right. So yeah. I try to keep that shit as, hey, you ain't got no problems. I'm a 37 year old grown ass man. We got the lights on. Look, whatever you need to look through, we're not even finna do all that and go get the warrant shit. If you believe it's in here, it's your job to find it, Mr. Officer. But I'm just gonna keep it trip real with you. It is not in here. It smell like it's in here, but it ain't in here. Cause when you hit the lights, I hit my lights and whatever you looking for, <laughs> it's not here. Voila. I got so, you. And, uh, and I'm, I'm trying to be honest with you, but no, if no. you want to waste your time searching this car, you can lift the hood. It ain't in here, Mr. Officer. It smell like it. It smells like it. I know that, but it ain't. <laughs> it's a lot of people, you know, that don't want change and want things to stay the same. Right. I agree. The it's a fun game today. It's, it's a lot of people who are totally fine with the way that the infrastructure is set up now within the police department. So how do you plan on standing up against those people? Because unlike us, they have, you know, monetary resources that they pool together and yeah, they, they have know, numbers. They got numbers. They got resources. And they, and they come in with the with the with money and and, and they demand and unions. Well, and stuff union. like that. We don't have. Unfortunately, we haven't been given that opportunity. So you, being an advocate for, you know, the change. How do you feel like you going? You know, speak truth to power in those regards. So there are a couple of things that have to happen. First, I got to get elected, right? Yes, sir. So we got to get out and vote. Yes, sir. That's that's the important thing, right? Um, but I'm not scared of that piece. As a matter of fact, somebody, an, an actual city council member asked me, he said, you're not scared of, of the changes that you're proposing and some of the powers that be? I'm not scared of that. I'm not scared because their community, our communities, want change. And I want you to be able to hold me accountable, right? So if a sheriff deputy stops you and you get less than professionalism, out of the conversation, whether you were wrong, right, wrong, or indifferent, right? I want you to be able to pick up the phone and call me and say, hey, Pat, listen, this is what happened, right? Because if you hold me accountable, I can hold them accountable, right? And it, it starts to change the system. I want everybody in this room to say, you know what? That's my sheriff, right? That's my sheriff's office, right? I'm proud of what they're doing. And right. they're going after these real and, bad and guys. Here's, I got here's a why question. I think the difference is, like, you saying you want people to say, that's my sheriff, but the reality is, in our communities, we want to look and say, that's my nigga. I got, but that's okay. That's, that's, that's my nigga, because that, that, applying the police aspect to it makes it you, you on the other side of what we believe in. But if I look at you and be like, man, man, sheriff, he got me, that's my, that's my nigga right there. He ain't gonna let nothing bad happen. Like, and that takes a level of effort to create that amount of trust in our communities because it doesn't exist. Like, so I think that a, a lot of that comes from, like I said, just the police not having an understanding. I don't, I've never seen a black police officer and be like, man, he gonna treat me different because he looked like me. And not even being black, but just a police officer in general. Me and Los got pulled over, what was we, in Indiana? Mm-hmm. We got pulled over in Indiana and the police came, it was one police, and then when that second car come up, you already know, oh, nigga, we going to jail. But then when I saw who got out the car, it was Carol Baskins. <laughs> she did not look like an officer. You know, like the lady who do the paperwork? I just think they sent her, because they were shorthand. She was yeah. not a, and then they no help. Out. But the we way they treated out. us during the stop, I mean, they stood, stood us up against the car, ran all through our car. 
One of the officers trying to take my hat off. Wow, you got that Chico. on there tight, don't you? Tried to Chico hat. They grabbed my hat and all that. Like, just violated my personal space and violated our personal space. And then you know what we got? All right, man, well, in the great state of I I Indiana, don't do this, that, and the third, go on about your way. They, I don't have anywhere to go to say, man, hey, man, I'm my personal rights to grab my hat. You know, it's a very sensitive <laughs> part of my ensemble. I don't like that shit. <laughs> What can be done about officers out here violating motherfuckers' personal space? Like, is there something that could be done to where, in the communities, if you violate somebody or, or and they have a, a you know a valid complaint about being violated by an officer, is there something that can be put in place to where they have to come into the community and really serve? You got to come around here and cut grass for a week for free. <laughs> now let me, ask, but let me ask you this though: what what happens with these officer complaints? Like, what what happens after somebody makes a complaint? And then they do the investigation. The same people who would fucking violate. What, what happens after? So that? the question becomes: Is the, is in this scenario, is the investigation sustained? Is right. It, is it if the investigation is sustained, people are suspended, right? There are people that get fired because of it. These things happen. A lot of people just simply don't hear about it. As well as you know, it's yeah, we just, want to hear we, about we, we hear about the shootings, hear about the we hear about the rest of that. Right. Uh, but what we want to do is create an environment where complaints are one of the things we had at the city was uh, an anonymous tip line, right? And you actually go through. Well, we 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 know what the the, the whole concept is in in our in our neighborhoods, right? Uh, we have to break that cycle though. And we have to be bold enough to say, okay, this was wrong. This is how I felt, right? And let us deal with it. Right. And, and y'all really want people to tell y'all shit. People die. They got to live in them neighborhoods after they done told everything. Yeah, but you also want to no be treated. For you want to be right. treated, treated professionally. That's let right. me ask you this. Georgia is well known for being a hotbed for hateful activities. Like the KKK still has a presence in Georgia to this day. What is law enforcement doing about that? This well, is like a legit terrorist organization for the last 200 years. So it's a couple things we got to keep in mind, and, and we mentioned this earlier. Georgia was created as a prison state, all right? When the colonists came over, Georgia was a prison state. So it never has fully evolved from that, right, in terms of the number of incarcerations, et cetera. Uh, but at the same time, do you say that these individuals, are, whether it be the Ku Klux Klan or the skinheads or whoever, right, have they committed a crime, right, that you can prove, right? Or is it the Black Panther Party? Have, you, have they committed a crime that you can prove? So the commission of a crime, regardless to who it is, is one that should be investigated thoroughly. I'm not, well, but that's mm -hmm. the thing. We might not have committed a crime that they can prove, but we definitely do crimes that they can make up. You know what I mean? They can make up a crime. Yeah, we said they do that. Yeah, like, yeah, it is, don't right, fuck, right, I act like you right, gotta you do can, something. You know, I know nothing. so many motherfuckers locked up for doing nothing. Well, but to your point, right, we have to change the mentality that goes along with, I've heard police officers say over the years, if you follow a car long enough, you can find a reason to stop it. Uh -huh. right? That sounds racist as hell. Well, not necessarily <laughs> racist. It doesn't matter which car you're following. But a good police officer can find, and I don't mean good, from a moral standpoint, right. but someone that is technically sound can find a reason to stop that car if they're technically sound enough to do it. We got to change that mentality, right? So, so, you're, so what? You broke your tail light's broken. What's wrong with me coming up and saying, you know, Chico, hey, uh, your tail light's broken? Nothing. Right? That right? would be but awesome. That, man. So we got to change the mentality. That we got to change awesome. the mentality. You know what I mean? Right? But, but How many times do you think they're gonna let you slide? You get two of them broken tail lights. Now your license suspended. When are you gonna fix your tail light? Now you get pulled over and your you license fix the suspended. I mean, no, your I mean, tail light out. Right? It's yeah, a it, felony it's like, charged now in Georgia because they got the new law, two tail lights, and you're there out you of go. here. You making up laws? Shit, yeah, that's what y'all be doing. <laughs> no, that's exactly what y'all be doing. <laughs> but, you know, it's like though. It's <laughs> Look at piece. the police laughing. He know <laughs> it's a piece of that that should be accounted for too. Like, you know what I mean? The police is supposed to serve and protect. You know what I mean? And I think they didn't never get, say what they were serving, serving and, and protecting. protecting. That's it exactly ain't just two words that that is used to describe the police and what they're supposed to do to serve and protect. 
But they might want to change you, it. If I get pulled over with a with a tail light, you know what I'm saying, or whatever it may be, where I come from should be taken into account. Oh, this person lives in a neighborhood that I know is, you know, downtrodden and messed up. So I, we're going to do something to make sure that you have the resources to help to show that it's not just about making sure that you follow the law, but making sure we serve and protect you. We want to protect you from having to, like you said, get me home at night. You should you shouldn't want me to go to jail. Like you shouldn't look for a reason as a police officer to get me in jail. But like I said, that program that's set up to where the money run shit, then they come in and say, hey man, we don't give a fuck about that. We need more of them guys in here so we can make these license plates for 10 cents a day. But that's what I'm saying. Who, what, what, what made people ever think that to serve and to protect, they meant people. They're not, what, that's not what they doing. They serving and protecting the law. Stop thinking this shit is, they not here to help you and be your fucking hero. They well, serving this law. Well, that's you ever went to court? Change. That's exactly You know what, what they do? Change. They serve you them papers. They uh, serving the law. They right. protecting the law. But we and have to do, holistically, exactly. we have to just do a better Just change the slogan. Like, it ain't about you. We serving and protecting the law. We'll whoop your ass. And then throw a peace sign or something. Just let people know what's going on. Look, look we got to make the shit sound better than it is. We got to change just like you said, right? I, I firmly believe that from a law enforcement perspective, <laughs> we have to be the olive branch, right? And that olive branch becomes an opportunity for us to sit down and continue to have these conversations. Yeah. And how we get better about it. I'm just going right? to let y'all know y'all won. No, it ain't shit, about winning y'all. Yes, the hell it is. No, y'all, about, bro, y'all got all the weapons, all the tanks. All the shotguns, all the, bullets. all the bullets, all the dogs, all the yeah. fast cars. <laughs> criminals don't stand a chance in this America no more. It ain't even so fun. So why they got to be criminals? It ain't fun no what, more. What, what they ain't, what, y'all, y'all overdo everything. Right. 20 what, what, police on one like nigga. Get like his legs, get his elbows. When you had a horse, if your horse was on nuts. Point, you get away from a motherfucker. Yeah, 18, man, 12. you remember cops and robbers? The robbers at least had a chance. <laughs> Get around the corner, pow, pow, pow. So, but Shoot some, tile, something you three mentioned. more blocks. Now the shit in right there. Helicopter showed up with a tank on it. <laughs> Police. <laughs> Police blew a motherfucker up. There's nothing. With, look, it is under investigation. With, it was a suspect. Leave him alone. But you know the interesting piece, and you old, brought up man, a, a really good point, that and that is how do we attract younger people to law enforcement? You want more athletic right. officers? Well, they need to be, right? Nah, man. But how do we attract young people uh, they, from our generation and from our neighborhoods, right? They, and I agree. We, we, we look at the military. But the other thing that we have to do, and I think this will help in our communities, is we have to do a better job of making sure that we can mentally unpack what happens on a daily basis. And what I mean is, you know, for 30 years, now the first time I got a psych test, psych evaluation, was when I was trying to get a job. And so all the things that you see on a given night. I think the police had to get them once a year, too. And that's my point. And that's, and see, that's something else we have to change. At least once, if not twice a year. Really? Or at least when an incident occurs, how can we be, do a better job of getting services so that they can unpack as well? So because say, for instance, you win this election, right? When I win it. When do you win? I'm, I'm just hypothetically speaking. Okay. Let me, let me live, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> like, what a, how would you... I don't know what it's called. How, like it's your sheriff department. What, what kind of culture? Since we're talking mm-hmm. about the culture of police, right. what type of culture would you like to have in in your outfit? Like, what what are going to be some of the requirements to work around or under, you know, Sheriff Labat? And, and one of the things that I was able to do as ten years as chief was start with customer service. Right. My goal for everyone that was in my my department, and the same thing with the sheriff's office. If I cannot figure out how to help you as a customer, right? I don't care if you're a detainee. I don't care if you get stopped on the side of the road, whatever it is. If I can't help you as a customer, I haven't done my job. Right. If I cannot add value to whatever is happening, whether it be a stop or whether you're stopped on the side of the road. How many times has anybody seen somebody stopped on the side of the road and you see police officers and sheriff deputies fly right by them? Right? I figured they had right. some more important shit. To if do. the blue lights are on, they ain't had nothing else to do. Oh. Right? And my point being is that they should be able to help. And this is the other thing that, that you hold true is, especially in law enforcement, it seems to be that people become more patient about 30 minutes before time for them to get off. 
right? And some of the think, police be switching shift. I can't tell you all that. Well, hell, you said they be more patient. Thirty <laughs> you minutes. You just want to know where that is. Yeah, so I can be out. <laughs> so you, you know, the police the switch shifts at six no, o'clock. So, no, uh, no. yeah, let's go with this traffic, man. They might let us go or something. No, but my point is, we should pack that all the way through our shifts. We should pack that patience all the way through our shifts and add value. And so, if maybe every, the shifts too long. And in some instances, or maybe they should, we should go to 12 hours and give them more off time, right? So there, there are things to be able to do that. Oh, no, but, I don't, y'all don't need no more benefits. Y'all got every, y'all ain't getting shit else. How I'm you want us to this. attract good the, people? Man, well, it ain't about, you keep using what you've been using. They, they ain't, But if them. we continue yeah. to do what we've always done, we'll Look, always get what we get always got. Y'all get too much shit. Right? I agree y'all get so way we gotta, too much shit. You, know, you got to be able do. to attract people. You got to yeah. be able to retain good quality officers and deputies. And that's part of it, right? And so one of the things that we have to do is be able to uh, really create that attraction. One of the things I'm going to do, it's create a cyber SWAT team. And it's what? They already got that. That's well, more no, police. Let, man. Let, no, listen to me. Listen to me. A How cyber about SWAT, a SWAT team, team where the for average them Karen's, huh? the white ladies who call them the police. See, there average. you go. Where's their task force? But you didn't you didn't let me finish. All right, let me let me hear this. I want a cyber here. SWAT team where the average age is less than twenty four years old. Right? So now we got young officers coming in in a field that in IT field, right? where they can go after these pedophiles, all right? They can go after these criminals. Atlanta's number two for- um, Sex trafficking. For sex trafficking, okay. right? Yeah. We can go after these folks, but now you have recruited a younger force. Somebody to say, I'm proud to be a part of the sheriff's office. Okay, well, at we this don't young need age. an old force too for these old white ladies who call them the police and everybody. They need a task force too. They, what was, ain't nothing you ain't working on them for them? <laughs> we, want, we want you to- to, if you see something, we want you to say something. But they making up shit. You seen the videos? All you gotta do is be black. They call it and they tell it in the police. And, and they they're it. out here well, and they're dancing the and police. they got but music and barbecue sauce so everywhere. Right. The safest right. nigga you'll right. ever meet in your life is a black, a black bird, bird watcher. <laughs> but but check this out. She they also lost her job. So you're not right. supposed to have no barbecue sauce so somewhere. <laughs> right. But but she lost her job. Right. And, and he survived that situation. Right. And that's the important thing, is that we have to be able to continue. Uh, you know, hope is not a strategy, right. but we have to really lean in toward making sure these conversations continue. I want you to let all the officers know that the black community is not anti-police, man. We just don't, we're tired of the one-sided brutality and the mistreatment. If that's what the police gonna do, Spread that shit around. Whoop well, everybody ass, violate everybody. Don't just treat my community messed up. And that's why I want to turn to this camera and say it, because it might be some officers out there who wondering, do the black people not like us? We don't. It's only because you don't like us. Right. The, and the certain aspects of <laughs> yeah. I had to let them know. Certain hey, they as, be right though. Certain aspects of policing just don't apply to us. Like I've seen other people get pulled over and fuck you asshole, write the ticket, you're right fucking the ticket, asshole. You dickhead. You're fucking dickhead. You didn't have anything better to do. There was nobody trapping, huh? You couldn't go fuck up the trap. Where's DeAndre, Pat? Come on. Give me your damn badge number. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna call my congressman. Yeah, exactly. You'll be out of work in the morning. You'll never work in this town again. And that could be real. And Where is the right. task force for them? But you're right. if we get pulled over, and be like, what'd you say, officer? Get out of the goddamn car. Get out car. the car. You know what I mean? Put so that goddamn phone down. You know what I mean? It's so He's got a gun. It's just the, the difference of the enforcing of the law. Here's, here's the thing we got to keep in mind. A lot of this has been going on for years. Right. I know. Right. And I ain't not, mad because you not, ain't saying nothing about it not, to him, not, Right. Well, but here's the thing. <laughs> I'm that, just messing that, with you, man. It ain't all your fault. I, but that, you do well, be with him. You well, be with him. Well, here's the thing. And here's what you got to keep in mind. In leadership, you got to be able to accept the, the criticism. Right, and then figure out how we we get better. You ever had to and discipline an officer for like being a dirty officer? I have fired people for being a dirty officer after the uh, investigation, though, right? Yeah, I gotta give them due process. Yeah, get that gotta idea. give them due like, process. You know, he I gotta did give them due process. Okay, right? Got I have fired people, and civilians have brought them back to work. Wow, because really? they said I was being too harsh. Oh, really? Right? Yeah, but. I mean, it, those things happen. And these are, these are a civilian re uh, review board 
of their peers, right? And when I say their peers, I mean our community. I don't mean uh, police officers or So you or never like been at work and then just look around the jail and be like, how did they catch all of these black people and no white folks? Well, let me tell you something. When I first started, because I'm from here, right? Went to Frederick Douglass High School. Every Friday night I walk in there, I thought it was a class, class reunion, right? It, and I would say, right, it's, it's 400 people in here. How come 15 are white, right? Are, are people not calling the police? And that's the key, right? We call the police on each other. We're not calling the police because somebody's singing too loud in the choir, right? We call in police because something is happening. And we just have to figure out how to better serve. And what I mean is this, if there, especially if there's a mental issue associated with it, right? We have to make sure that we, I was going to say armed with the, the resources, but we don't want to arm anybody. All, you I got everything, say, man. I knew you go say that. Y'all got but we gotta make sure we got lasso. We got specialists Y'all have that much. can come take care of our, our mentally ill. And so we, we, we have to get better at it. And, that, and that's One the piece, Indiana right? Jones. Yeah. Makes sense. You know what I mean? So, but the re I know me, I always think, and this is a, you know, you know, we know you can't really, you know, say anything to this because it's probably going to be, you know, bad for your base, but sometimes you should be able to sell a little bit of dope, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> See, now you're pushing it, No, man. I'm serious. <laughs> you're pushing I know it, it sounds crazy, but I mean, come on, man. Like, you're pushing it. Come, what the fuck? Come on, I got to go to jail for, for this bullshit. You know what I'm doing. I'm not out here trying to. Fuck the community up. They do I'm need to change. Trying to get high. Like, they do let, need to let, change let, some let, drug let laws though. Let, let me let me be clear. There's some good there's some good drug dealers out there that look out for the community when nobody else will. Well, and let, I especially, let me be clear. especially if you're a responsible drug dealer and you're selling your drugs to adults who go to work for their money. All right, this is getting let, too political. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had y'all for let, a minute. Let me be clear. For a minute, I had y'all. But let me be clear. Let me be clear. If you break the law, yeah, and I'm the sheriff, and he the sheriff. Your you ass going, is going, going to jail. jail. He ain't going to say it. You're going to jail. But I, I mean, said it. Your ass is going to jail. Going to jail. I mean, hey, but you know I that, right? It. I mean, but you I know that. Know I don't that. sell drugs. Yeah, yeah neither do I. I, 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 am, I ain't never I'm sold mad. drugs I'm because I'm impulsive. But that's what I'm saying. And I'm good at marketing. And they're like, hey, who needs some drugs? You're not getting drugs. You're not getting drugs. Like, that's what I mean. Like, that, the leniency that is applied across to everybody else should be applied to us as well. Like, I shouldn't have to, you you pulling up on me. And catching me with something as a especially as a black man, you know what I mean? You understand the, the trials and tribulations that we face in these communities. And a lot of that stuff is passed down. It's not something that we went and learned. We got it inherently. It, right. it was given to us. So I'm saying that leniency that's given to Chad, no disrespect, Chad, but you know, you got that, you know, you got that Caucasian name. They ain't gonna so, let him slide either. No, Chad straight. But uh, like the the Leniency that's given to a chair, like, look, man, hey, you know what I'm saying? Don't do this anymore, all right? I'm gonna take this from you, I'm gonna let you go on about your way. I catch you again, it's over with. Like, how do you, is that not something that's realistic that can be done? Because that's how you create a difference in opinion about the police. Like, okay, they not just trying to fuck me over for making mistakes. That's how you change the mentality of a but young is, person. It, but is that a mistake? See, uh, I mean, is that a mistake? Say, yes. I mean, is that a mistake? I, I think it is because yeah. I know everything I did in the streets was just because of willful ignorance and me not knowing no better. He so wasn't I mean, selling drugs in the streets. Yeah, but at a certain point. Well, that's where I was going. Right? No, he yeah. wasn't doing uh, that. Okay. But it's all hypothetical. At, at a certain point, <laughs> if you want people to have positive <laughs> outlooks on the police, I know that if I'm a black man and I got a son and I'm out trying to provide, make a way in whatever way I'm doing it, whether it be legal or illegal, but let's just say for conversation purposes, it's illegal. When I come back in the house and be like, man, Sheriff LeBette, man, he looked out for him. He a good dude. I'm telling that to my children. Now they don't have the same mentality because you did something for me to help me and not just punish me because I made a mistake. Now you catch me again, it's over with. Well, here, but, and, and I got it, right? But hypothetically, hypothetically. I love him. Here, here's the thing that you got to keep in mind. What is untold are the number of times somebody has stopped somebody for DUI and said, "Do you have a girlfriend that can come pick up the car?" Or, or yeah, do you have somebody. They don't do that in us. Well, school. again, don't say not on us, right? Right? Not on us, right? But at the same time, how do you sit and say this is an absolute? 
right? Because it's up to, it's, it is, you're absolutely right. And what I'm hearing is, it's the officer's discretion. Right? Yeah, we, and we're not talking, and, and these things happen because we're not talking about you getting stopped and you got 10 pounds of weed yeah, in the nah. car. I'm right? talking about a, somebody with a half an ounce of Reggie. And he been selling this for six months. He just trying to get the Reggie off. It's hard to sell. I got you. And but then you catch me with my last. So I'm almost done. I almost got it all the way off now. And I get I get stopped. And now I got to go to jail after all this hard work. Like, come on, officer. You can take this shit. I was about to sell it. But don't lock me up for the Reggie. So now the question becomes, they don't lock you up. How many of us say, whew, I got away. Let me start over with my Reggie. I mean... That comes, you're right. So the second that, time, you're okay with the, getting arrested the, the second the, the, time. Yeah, because that's on you. If you if you one of the motherfuckers that's so horrible of a drug dealer that you get caught, that should be your sign. It's not for you, champ. You what about, are bad at so this So you shit. said the second time is the okay, second, but if not. You, if you ignore the fact that God gave you a blessing and, and you got caught and ain't go to jail and you get caught again, that's on you. But I think that there should be some form of leniency because a lot of these elements in our community, Sheriff, we don't have any control over these the gun we don't the guns and the dope and all that was put there we don't have the ability to be able to utilize these things on our own like these are it's, it's generational like everything that's had my my father was murdered so i grew up without a father in the home now mind you i was lucky enough to learn how to be responsible early not to make the decisions that a lot of my peers made but at the end of the day i could have Right. Because there is right. no guidance there, they, and this is going on all across America. So at this point, I think that that level of leniency should be applied to us because of the years and years of systematic oppression that have happened. And it's like, I know that you are struggling with something that you have no control over. So understand I, that I understand that. So do I know that or I assume that? I right. mean, depending on the situation, yeah, right. I mean, you got to know right. that. Like a, a lot of times, now mind you, you go to the suburbs, lock all them motherfuckers up. See, they deserve see, to go we, to jail. Let me tell you what we're going to do when I'm sheriff. It doesn't matter where we are, suburbs, inner city. Right? If you break the law, your ass is going to jail. <laughs> but there are things that we can do better, right? We certainly want to execute uh, discretion. Right. We certainly want to want to use that. But even how many times has somebody been locked up and said, you know what? I was treated professionally. Right? No. This, yeah, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> this is what we got to change, right? And now I got an opportunity. Now I got an opportunity. So I, there are both sides to that. Right. And, and certainly I, uh, I don't compare, um, and, and certainly your, your father being, being not in your life because somebody else uh, took him. My father wasn't in, life, in my life because of my choices, but his choices, yeah. right? Like my little brother, and so, he was a bitch ass nigga just like your dad. It's all good. And so, <laughs> but the point being is I had to figure out, am I going to carry that anger around or well, I'm going to figure out how to do better, right. right? And to your point, look, I was a left turn away from making some bad choices. Right, and that's what I'm right? saying, Sheriff. Like, that process that you go through, you're going to slip and bump your head in that process of figuring it out because the options for us to do are the, of the things that we can do are very slim and limited. But so, that's therefore, why... in that process, if you know, if you see that uh, this environment is treacherous and this person is trying to make... Uh, you know, sense of whatever their reality is, and you come in contact with the police, there should be some s sort of discretion or, or, you know, just empathy towards these people to where you say, hey, young, hey, young man, come here, man. I know what you're out here doing. I know what you got going on. Look, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna crack you over the head, but I'm telling you, man, you're going. If I catch you again, and the, if, you, if I catch you out here again, you're going. And that right there does so much for police interaction. And I think it would do I, so much I for would, police interaction in our communities because you know that you're not just there to, like you said, serve and protect the law. You're really here for my best interest. And, and you're proving to me that I can trust the fact that you <clears> actually <throat> care about my situation. Right. They and got I, too many I, code words to, to like, where there's a a high concentration of black people. I don't like the words and the verbiage that they use to try to make it seem like there's always a, a clear and present danger. Like they always say, crime infested communities. What the fuck is a crime infested community? But that's why we gotta get in the communities and be a part of the communities, right? So you can have those conversations. I tell you more often than not. But do you know that a those lot of times that those presences mm -hmm. make shit worse because it adds to the tension. 
and the pressure of not trying you know up, and the struggle of trying to get out of this place. And then you you doing what you have to do and trying to survive this environment. And then there's this constant presence of if you have this interaction, you know that this is going to go bad just because you're where you're located and you're in what you call a high traffic crime infested community, which really just means where black people live. So let me ask this. Right. And if we're in that in that environment. Right. right and you see me walk up. What you going to say? Off. No, no. I'm saying you oh, see oh, you me asked. walk up. Oh, oh, my bad. I don't mean. Oh, I no, say, I, don't mean I don't mean. I don't mean. I don't mean the deputies. I, I don't mean a rabbit. <laughs> they gonna have that in the system. You got to catch Chico, baby. Hey. I am on foot. We got a fleer. <laughs> right, but we got a fleer. Because <laughs> look, if you, but that's what I'm saying. If we in that environment and you walk up, I know you ain't looking for me. Because when the sheriff come out, he look. He's serving that big warrant. But the point I'm making, the point I'm making is exactly. If see, you, if you, I know if the process, Pat Labatt. I'm not even a criminal. I understand. If you walking around the neighborhood, you gonna have that shit on with that big ass forty and that one badge right there. Hey, Carlos, come here. How you doing? And now all the niggas in the hood think I know you. Right. And now you're going to be coming back That's looking for I, one of them because so they going to fuck me up as soon as you leave. You <laughs> call police said and he that, spoke to that boy. So, that, so, that, so that's that's how how <laughs> But here's the question, right? Here's the he question. spoke to that boy. He knew them folk, man. How's he knew them folk. I knew that boy with police in hell, but, boy. But, but Los, how do, how do we change that? <laughs> I guess I you got to buy one of them. Them police houses, they financing them. Through that leniency. Through creating the element of leniency in regards to our communities. Don't put nobody in these communities that don't truly understand what we going through. And I'm not talking about the bitch ass niggas out the community that go be a police so they so can come back and exact revenge. revenge. I got you. I'm talking got about you. somebody who really understands and gets what these people are going through. And if you're going to be in, the, in our community and you see the things that are going on, you know, right. man, this dude ain't out here doing this because that's what he want to do. And this since, all that since is they want to do that, but, and they, I'm not cutting you off, no, this no, is my ahead. last thing no, I'm ahead. saying, but like you're saying, the police need to be in the communities. It needs to be some kind of way where it's like if they're going to put these officers in these, in these areas and you know that it's crime infested and you know that it's impoverished, they need to go back and, and check with the residents and, and get a quarterly or yearly evaluation of, and, and take those those you know, those stories in their account with this officer, he known for doing this. He violate people like this. Cause that's how these officers do become known in the neighborhoods for all the wrong shit right. that they do. Well, here's the thing though, right? And, and let's, let's take this opportunity. Instead of being fleet of foot, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of taking off when you see me, right? right? We've had this conversation. So Los, instead of you, you know, just, hey, you know what? Yeah, ain't no point in y'all running. I know Pat. Exactly. Ain't no point, y'all. So, so, so that we can build but that at some point, we got to you got a police too. Now yeah, you might right. have to run. Something has to be done if, to if make you make caught you me that. wrong, I might have to give you the chase, so, so that, I can but, get but myself that's my a point. chance. That's that's my whole point. You so just I made can my just point. take this right? uh, fleeing yeah. charge instead of this other one. But you just made my point, right? Well, something, and and that's why I say conversations like this build trust, right? Right. So if I if I roll up. And matter of fact, you ready to jump on me tonight. Because you let him you talk. You <laughs> no, pulled up no. <laughs> just like a street dude. You <laughs> drive. You ready, ain't you ready Look, to jump on me You tonight. just roll the window down. I know you. I don't know him. <laughs> now, what? if I fuck around and then I talk to him and he jump out, he undercover, you was there the whole time and I ain't never see you. It's but what made you comfortable enough to talk? Black. He was black. Mm -hmm. What made you comfortable enough to talk? I just told you. Mm -mm, mm -mm. He wrote that window down. You peeked through there. You recognize me. Yeah, I ain't, I'm definitely not that dumb. This it, ain't selling him it, shit. It, it, it. <laughs> <laughs> you think you going? How you gonna wait, send but, the undercover? I know him. Wait, no, no, Pat! no. no. Pat! <laughs> Pat! You said in the community, uh, bro. Uh, that, in the community. <laughs> But let me tell you, you gonna bring he, your boys to my hey, trap. Hey, hey. Oh, you he tell, oh, we gonna have he a run off. The story. He tell the story because the first thing that happened when that window rolled down, he looked before he looked at me because we didn't know which which warehouse we were at. Right. Yeah. I'm telling you the truth. He tell you, he he wasn't running. I act like I ain't know what he was talking about. He showed it <laughs> at 85. He was going to tell me how to get to 85. <laughs> 
And he sure was. He's, what, what, why you won't know? Yeah, what, what's going on? Then he recognized me, oh, which is yeah, my yeah, entire yeah. point. Right, right? <laughs> which, is, which is my entire point. He just made my point. If we can build that kind of trust just from one interview, right? right? And even now, then anything's possible. And I really believe, I'm telling you, that trust, building that trust with the officers comes with leniency. Because in the communities, crime is one of the only options that we've been given for monetary gain. And then you got to keep in mind, in the areas that we live in, the shit y'all consider illegal is this way of life. That's what I mean. Like, so when you come into the community for me to be like, hey, man, nah, my man, that's Pat. He cool. You got to really do something to make me feel like you cool. And that entails, for the most part, as tough as this may be, man, let me slide, man. I'm fucked up right now. I was out here doing something. Man, let me slide, Pat. So, you, so, man, my nigga, let me slide. So, so, uh, Bro, you super cop of the year? Damn, you got to take care of everybody. So, so how many kids you got, Chico? I have a daughter. Pat! Daughter, man. right? Ain't no affair with daughters. I don't like daughters. But my two boys, right? You know, you ever tried, well, I was going to say you ever had tried, tried to have a conversation with a high guy, right? It, it blowed. But I, I was, that was a bad question to ask you, right? I don't be talking to people that's high pay. I don't, I, that was a bad question to ask you. Because they can't so, keep up with the conversation. So one of their friends was, was high as a kite, right? And he came over to the house. And I'm trying to figure out, why am I trying to have a conversation with him? Right, but it leans back to what you were saying. Is really going back to say there's a better time to have this conversation uh -huh. if there is no harm that can come of their friend, right? But if, now, if there's harm, or they have the potential to harm somebody else, what it, what's going to happen? Well, you ain't going to jail. <laughs> you know. So that's what I mean, right? We right. but we have to build that trust because just as equally as much or equally as important is if you want me to trust if you want to me to you. trust you to trust me yeah. i gotta trust you right, right which is cool but i like i said man i really believe there should be some type of you know whether it be under the table shit y'all don't snitch on each other and shit at the office right. so it, hey get the cops together that's like look man if you're gonna be over there you're gonna catch some, some motherfuckers down bad but hey let them rock if you know give them a shot to understand look we are here to enforce the law but I understand what's going on. All the things that you just said and explained to us, they got the citizens program, they got all these different programs you can go get involved in to counteract that. So the fact that you didn't know, I'm just gonna let, I'm gonna consider the fact that you didn't know and me catching you up bad right now. So you now that you know, like, there is no excuse for you to, for me to ever have to come back here and see you doing the same thing. And I don't disagree with you, but I think what happens is there are a lot of good officers out there, a lot of good deputies out there where those things happen, but it's not publicized, Yeah. right? right. I can tell you that there, there are a number of officers that have allowed people to say, you know what, I don't want to tow your car, man, right? But, but your license is suspended, right? That's the only really non-discretional piece in uh, the whole process of somebody Going to jail, right? Yeah, your license yeah, suspended. I mean, but that, your even license with suspended, suspended license, license, I ain't forgot how to drive, drive baby. Right. I still know how to drive, and that's I what I'm got saying. This. Like, I got like, you. I got you. I just, I just, but, I just know that there's no, there, there's never been any lean as a, as a whole. Some people might experience it and might have been able to run into those officers who got a good heart and understand. Yeah. But that is. Far and few between. We so, have to change. Yeah, don't change waste it. my leniency on the seatbelt violation. Yeah. Let me go when I did shoot. Let me ask you this though: Do you feel like more? Do you feel like officers know the difference between criminals and civilians? Some, because I feel like so, so, some civilians are being treated like criminals. So here's here's the so here's the first thing I'd ask you: What's the difference? What's the difference? Yeah. A, what's criminal the, a criminal is the age. Hey, that's a motherfucker. Can a civilian be a criminal? That's his job. Can, wait, a, can, a, can a civilian be a criminal? Yeah, the, the difference is getting caught. My that's point. The difference. My point. You, you are a civilian until you get caught doing right. some criminal you just shit. Made, you just made my point. Yeah, I know. Nah, but that's I meant like, like a career too, so. criminal. Don't, like you a criminal. You do this shit all the time. This ain't your first rodeo. But it doesn't make But if you a criminal tonight, you ain't a criminal yet. You just you just wrote, you did some crime. You gotta go to What's court that? and if go to did, jail, and then when you get home, then you a criminal. Like a criminal done graduated through the justice system already. So here's what I prefer to say instead of 
determining if you're a criminal or if you're a citizen, right? If you're a repeat offender, right, and you, especially violent repeat offenders, here's the thing that we have to really, Whoop really focus all on. Whoop all ass. Now, see, that's what y'all should do. You should have the ass whooping package for people who, viol- people who like violence. Get them some violence. But people who fucking up in traffic, they don't deserve the violence package. So here, here's what we're going to focus on. Get your ass whooped for going 97. Like, nigga, that's a nice car. You're right. going to beat me up because you mad my shit fast? Until you lose control of it and kill somebody. Until then, save the ass whooping. <laughs> the point I'm making is this. 40 to 50% of the violent crimes are created by less than 500 people. Right? We know who they are. Whoop they ass. Y'all don't mind going to people's house doing shit and, and violating. The only way we start with that, Lowe's, is when I get elected. There we go. Right so now, you mean that when you get elected, I'm coming to violent see motherfuckers getting ass I'm whooped. Coming, I, you, I'm shit, coming to see I'll vote for you again. Cause I, ain't, I stood in line for a whole hour and I was like, man, they would pull by on the uh, Sprinter van. They had your face coming up in HD. I was like, look at my boy with the line up, <laughs> skin clip, pat the back. And then I went to the library and I voted. I, I, I made sure it. I got I you now. It. Hey, man, we ain't going to yeah. keep you in here all night because we can talk this shit out. And, yeah, you know, exactly. you, you yeah. family to us. It's just like, you know, you the uncle that's the police now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. You the uncle that's the police now, man. And we wish you much success and much love. Is there any other questions from the floor? Any questions from the floor? Where? Where can they vote? Great question. So early voting has already started. Yes, sir. So it will run. Got mine in. Early voting will run through August uh, 7th, right? Early voting on the weekend, this weekend, and next, this Saturday, and next. The actual election date is August 11th. And so the largest place to vote, and we talked about it earlier, is is State Farm. But uh, you can certainly go to my website, Labot for Sheriff, and pull up all the early voting locations. Again, I do want to give a shout out to Fulton County. We went from six early voting locations to 20. Yeah. And so over <laughs> so over in uh, Wolf Creek area, right? Right. The, the reported lines will maybe take three minutes to vote. All right. So they've done a much better job. We don't expect that uh, precincts will be The team did open. a great job getting your, getting your signs out. I've been seeing them all through my through my neck of the woods. I appreciate it. Yeah, I everybody appreciate in, it. in the community, you got definitely got a lot of support, and we appreciate you coming through the 85 South it. Show. Any, anything you need from us, man, you just let us know. You're more than welcome to use our platform. For whatever I appreciate you got. it. And even when after this, and you win, and you got things coming up that you need yeah, the community yeah, to be a part of, we definitely want to well, be Well, I, I come want out you there. all to be a part of, of what the future looks like Most right, when it comes to law enforcement. Yeah. Uh, so next time, it won't be as... Uh, a harder conversation because you all be a part of the Well, solution. you had to make the second right. round harder, yeah. man, because we let you slide the first time. Is that man. what it was? Then we got through in the comments. They were like, man, why y'all ain't asking about prison reform? And I was mm. like, we only had so much. So no, now that we, no, no, we, we just was, was busting you up a little bit, man. No, I love sure it. You, I love it. You I appreciate it. It is, it is and stuff how like we'll that. get better. Yeah. Right. And so certainly thank you all for, for allowing me the platform. Yeah. We were showing uh, the, the, the people what kind of guy you really are, man. And they know what type of guys we are. So it's well, like we want you to act, we want you to be in here answering the hard shit first. Cause if you can deal with us talking like we talk, and them press conferences and all that other stuff is a cakewalk. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Yeah, That's, a blessing. Definitely. That's a blessing. And certainly thank you all. Uh, and if it's anything you need, you know, I'm here. Right. Yeah, Let's continue that. the conversation. Just give me one of them yeah, stickers to put on my yeah, exactly. license plate so they know to leave yeah, me alone. You know, That's I'm all I want. This is <laughs> just that real. one where they put the flashlight in on you. If you ain't yeah, see it, it's yeah. reflective. There you just go. give me a couple of them. There, there, you go. there you go. So, yeah. again, I enjoyed it. <laughs> ask and, me what question to ask the officer when he pulled me over. You know, the lunch is at 6 o'clock this evening. <laughs> Oh, wow. Hey, man, go ahead, go buddy. Go ahead. Yeah. There you go. No, the watchman again, is you. watching the watch. What you watching? What? <laughs> Pat. I know Pat. Just got to go. Hey, no, you'd be surprised. Most of the time, <laughs> most of the time they tell you, you know, well, you can call him from jail. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I ain't even did shit. <laughs> exactly. Hey, yeah, because, you know, I'm not the sheriff yet, right? Yeah, we got to get there. You'll be the, we got to get there. You and then the it. other piece is we have to create a balance, right? We, we want to be able balance. to say to, to the officers and deputies, you know what, thank you for doing your job. Yeah, we definitely That's we what gotta, they want. We gotta tell sure. the truth before hey, you go. Is that what the police want? Police want some praise. Is that, that, is that what y'all... Don't you like praise? I'm just asking. Y'all thought y'all was so tough. Y'all 
That's don't, what you like, want. don't you like being told thank you? Oh, well, hey, man. Yeah. Uh, what have they done good recently? See, there you go. Well, do something. Well, do something. No, let's, let's do take, something. Now, man. were you... Uh, you asked what, what have they done lately? Good, right? Good. So you look over, even in the uh, university area, where uh, several police officers and commanders went out and did nothing but to those needy, right? Passed out gift cards, right? Making sure people had an opportunity to continue to, to feed their families. Right. That, I mean, it's it's that's how we be, rebuild that's, trust. That's decent. Right? That, that, that's yeah. decent. We, hey, look, yeah. but 85 uh, percent is we need Sheriff Pat Labot. We need him to win because we don't want the person who do win to come fucking with us for fucking with him. So, right. All right? right. So that ain't going to happen. They probably let, happen. Let's they, get him in office so we really can utilize Because they don't have they don't have, they don't have a platform like this to come to. And we know that we, we, we laugh and we joke and we comedians and stuff like that, man. But the people who heard exactly what they needed to hear. You a real stand-up dude, Pat Labatt, and we wouldn't have it no other way. Man. Let's do it, buddy. Ain't nobody else come on here and be the police. <laughs> you the only one, bro. Let's ain't gonna do be, it. Ain't nobody else it. coming. You the only one that's going to ever be who you are and did what you did. 85 Stop <laughs> Show. My man, Pat Labatt. Appreciate you, baby. Appreciate and we got your theme song Appreciate already. Ah, <laughs> I'm going to need it. I'm going to have to walk out. Yes, sir. Roy, hell up, Chico. Let's get the shot, man. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Hold up. What my mans? Let me get it. Put, you got your mans? Oh, yeah. Let's do this handle back mans, man. Thank you, baby. Joe, what's the time? 12.01. We got, we got time for one more joint? Yeah. All right, bet. <laughs> 